I would like to invite you all to step a few hours back in time and to experience again the black winding road that brought you here this morning. Whether you came by car, bus, or foot, it is likely that you use the, bl the thick black coating that is, covers a substantial area of the earth. Imagine yourself back on that road now. The sounds, the sights, the smells. What was the designer's intention designing it in that way in the first place? What was he aiming for? Now try to imagine the layer under that thick black coating, the earth. How would the earth design a solution for traffic? Could it come up with a solution that is as effective, but still allow it to be nourished and breathe? And what about the rain? How would the rain design a word, a road? May it come up with a solution that may still allow it to nourish the earth and re relieve its thirst? And the birds, what would they add to a design brief? And us, everyday users, could we come up with a solution that would really answer our needs and wishes? In the Buddhist tradition, there is a saying inviting humanity to go about on earth just like a bee collecting nectar from a flower. The bee gathers nectar, transforms it into sweet honey. In doing so, not only that it doesn't harm the beauty or the fragrance of the flower, it also supports its growth, its growth and procreation. So can we design roads that support nourishment and procreation? Can we redesign each and every one of our life habits to nourish and be nourished with every step we take? What would it mean to design our way back towards participation? I would like to share with you a process I went through exploring the phenomena of morning dew. Morning dew is a very subtle phenomena. It can be disregarded very easily. But if we think for a moment of the amount of dew that covers the earth every morning, Perhaps we will look at it with fresh eyes. So we started exploring how we might integrate this phenomena into our everyday life and into our home environment. Exploring new ways of interaction and collection. Exploring new ways to integrate different uh, members of the family into it. And exploring ways to maybe invite the rain in and the sun. And finally, Waterfall uh, was born. Waterfall is a, a upper well collecting rain and dew water all year round. In the rainy season, it collects up to 460 liters. And in the dry season, it collects up to three and a half liters of dew every night. For me, waterfall is really an opportunity. It's an opportunity for each and every one of us to, collect, to connect to the places in which we can harvest the natural accessible abundance in our own environment, in our own backyard. With wind, it's a little bit of a different story. We're so used to connect to wind on the large scale, very uh, big solutions, collecting energy very far away from where we need it. But what about these small, subtle gusts of wind just around us in the city? We started exploring ways to connect between wind and light and have uh, an immediate uh, outcome. Exploring the ways to maybe create new experiences out of it. And then finally, hooking it onto this very simple solution of a wind wheel to create what we call windy light. Windy light is a collection of self-sufficient outdoor lights operated by wind energy. It is created from the wind wheel, mill, a, a repetitive module integrating wind collection and an LED light source into one element. 
Windy light dances with the wind, illustrating a sustainability design vision in which products become a direct link between everyday resources and everyday human needs. Finally, agricultural waste. This plentiful, beautiful potential that we completely overlook the results of uh, almost every industry. Date ones are one example, a beautiful material that is thrown away after the dates are picked. This is a, a process we went through with uh, Cindiana of Galilee uh, Fair Trade, where we uh, try to see how we can invent a new life uh, for this material. And with the design process, finding new uh, product applications that allow new channels for this material and at the same time allow uh, the opportunity of creating uh, income for this lovely group of uh, women in Kufar Manda. And these are some of the objects we came up with. What I shared with you today is just a glance into my own personal journey towards design that comes from a deep sense of participation. It is really an invitation, and it comes together with a, a bigger story, which is the bridge methodology, which is a, a sustainable design methodology, which I developed, offering a holistic yet applicable view to sustainability design. Addressing design from a deep sense of participation can support us all in making that giant leap to a society that is nourished by the nectar of the world while transforming it into sweet honey. Thank you.